Hello everyone and welcome to ATEC. We hope you're well. Today we're going to look at plastic recycling. The plastic revolution started in 1955 and decades of intensive use for this material followed. We all know the impact, massive pollution of our ecosystems with disastrous consequences for marine life. But one company is on the verge of pulling off a masterstroke that will probably turn the world upside down. The Carbios company is going to build the biggest plastic recycling plant in France. We're going to introduce you to the cutting edge technology innovation in recycling. Do you know these recycling advances can address one of the most important environmental issues of our century? It is estimated that every year about 367 million tons of plastic are produced, the vast majority of which are used in the manufacture of disposable bottles or soft drink industry. They're made from polymer known as PET. These bottles can be recycled, yet most are sent to landfills, which too often still end up in the sea. They're still carried away by the sea, currents, and formed gigantic waste patches in the ocean. Subject to whether the sun's rays in the saltine of the water, the plastics break down into thousands of fragments that are decimated into the sea. Samples of these microplastics have been found in the marine animals, in food for human consumption, and even drinking water. This is why different recycling methods have been developed, but conventional processes have major limitations. The emergence of plastic in modern life began in the early 20th century. Bakelite became the first synthetic plastic to be produced in the world. We started to manufacture all sorts of objects that can be improved our daily lives. Telephones, radios, toys, car parts. It wasn't until 1950s, also known as the golden age of capitalism, that plastics became one of the most important materials in the industry. The emergence of plastic has led to a real revolution of consumption patterns. It has become the standard of an era characterized by mass production. Plastic has also created a culture of waste that has revealed the dark side of this material. Today, 40% of plastic produced in the world is used in single-use products. The figures also reveal that our dependence on plastic has continued to grow. In 1950, the world's production of this material was 2.3 million tons. By 2022, we've reached 367 million tons. According to the Plastic Industry Association, it is estimated that 1950 to today, the production of plastic in the world has reached 9.1 billion tons, and that only is one-tenth that has been recycled. The rest of the plastic has been incinerated or ended up in the oceans. It is estimated that about 8 million tons of plastic waste enter the sea each year. Ocean currents move this pollution around and perform patches of floating waste, which end up having a disastrous effect on marine life. The most infamous is the one located in Hawaii and California. The seventh continent is the 1.6 million square mile patch. According to a 2017 study, the North Pacific garbage vortex accumulates 18 million pieces of plastic that together would weigh about 100,000 tons. Microscopic plastics are considered the most dangerous element of the ocean debris and can often be mistaken for food by marine animals. This of course affects the human food chain as we can ingest chemicals from plastics. The only solution for this problem is to prevent the dumping of plastic waste into the oceans and seas. This can be done by improving our waste management and recycling systems. There are two techniques for large-scale recycling, chemical and mechanical. The former is expensive and energy intensive, while the latter is by far most widely used by most companies. The mechanical recycling process for PET begins with plastic beginning compacted and transported to the collection plant, where it is fed into a collector. The plastic is then introduced into a pit for washing. Then usually, a second manual examination takes place to seek ensure impurity of the material that will be sent to the shredder. At this stage, the bottles are crushed until they are fragmented and then melted at 270 degrees Celsius. The result is amphorous or semi-catalyne PET. Finally comes the process of rearranging the molecular structure and obtaining opaque resin. The main disadvantage of this process is that these bottles cannot be recycled individually as the material wears out and loses quality while each recycling. It is not possible to obtain new products from 100% recycled plastic. However, in 2016, Japanese scientists discovered a bacterium called Indinalia Saka, in a waste center. They investigated how it could degrade plastic and discovered that bacteria uses a PETASE and Newsom. It uses a water molecule to break down the plastic. First, it is necessary to understand that the enesium, it is a complex protein that performs chemical functions in our body. 
For example, it helps break down food that we eat so that the body can benefit from its nutrients. When we talk about depolymerization, we're referring to the process of breaking down the polymer, what is the sum of the molecules joined together leaving them in simple units called monomers. These monomers can be reassembled into polymers with the same level of strength, flexibility, and durability produced by the petrochemical industry. Unlike other recycled methods, enzymes prevent the material from deteriorating with each cycle. Recently, several companies have announced multi-million dollar investments to establish chemical recycling plants. Biochemical companies such as Loop Industry and Carbos are supposed to begin construction for the first molecular and enzymatic recycling plants. Pioneer Carbos counts on among the inventions of an enzyme that can cover up to 95,000 PET plastic bottles into monomers in just 10 hours. According to Carbos' head of research, the resulting product is identical to plastic made with petrochemicals. However, Carbos admits that the enzymatic recycling techniques require more energy consumption than conventional recycling, but the company says it's working in ways to solve this problem. The other factor that needs to be improved is the price. The price of kilo of virgin palladium based PET is based 90 cents, $1.50, while the price of PED produced by enzyme method would be no less than $1.93. However, factors such as rising oil prices and European regulations on single-use plastics are working in Carbos' favor. In June 2021, Carbos announced the successful production of its first enzymatically produced PET plastic bottles. In February 2022, Endormia Ventures announced the construction of the first manufacturing plant for using PET for biorecycling technology in France. This plant will have capacities to process up to 50,000 tons of PET waste per year and will be able to produce more than 2 billion PET bottles in the process. With this program, Carbos hopes to become the global reference in the circular economy. The plan is expected to become fully operational by 2025 after an investment of 200 million euros. The company expects to obtain financial support from the French government. The American Eastman and the Quebec-based Loop industry also plan to set up in France before 2025. It is no coincidence that these projects have been developed in France as of 2020 circular economical law sets the new target for 25% recycled content in PET bottles designed for beverages. The same level sets the goal for 100% recycled plastic by 2050. If these types of inventions include the expanded in the coming years, France will undoubtedly become a European leader in the recycling sector. And that's it. We've reached the end of our topic for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss our next topic, don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video and we'll see you soon on ATEG.